Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to come to you today virtually on behalf of the uh, UIP World General Council meeting in Buenos Aires. This is a very important session because I believe what it's going to illustrate to us is that not only lessons we have learned from COVID-19, but we must make sure that we don't forget what we learned before COVID-19 began. Here are my disclosures. COVID-19 is a serious worldwide pandemic, as you all know, and it involves a virus-induced inflammation, which triggers cytokine storm, causing tissue factor release, thrombin generation, fibrin formation to coat the virus and prevent spread. That's a great mechanism, but the unfortunate side effect is thrombosis. And we're seeing many aspects of thrombosis, including pulmonary thrombosis for the first time. And of course, everywhere where there's an endothelial cell can be attacked by the virus and we can see all kinds of strange thrombotic issues, organ insufficiency, even a, a DIC-like picture uh, and so forth. And fibrinolysis, of course, may complicate the issue and cause more bleeding. This is the beautiful alveolar endothelial interface where the oxygen and nutrients exchange and it's a primary attack focus of this virus. And what happens is that due to an ACE2 receptor binding to a spike like a protein, the virus pierces these endothelial cells like a spear. And we see all sorts of multiple effects here, not just coagulation, uh, uh, inflammation, calocrine formation, complement activation, and all sorts of, of reactions occurring. And of course, what can result of, is pulmonary edema due to activation of these kinins. And once this, this delicate interface is attacked, it may never be the same. Now, I'd like to go back in history to something that was taught to us by uh, Oscar Ratnoff, a famous hematologist who discovered a factor 12 deficiency in John Hageman. And what he showed us is that when John, when, when factor 12 is activated, it activates platelets, coagulation, fibrinolysis, and complement and calocrine systems with the net result of thrombosis, fibrinolysis, increased vascular permeability, vasodilatation, bradycardia, angioedema, histamine release, and hypotension. Wow. Well, now, COVID-19 is this tangled web, as he called it, on steroids, so to speak. It's a massive attack. And Oscar taught us something very important, which I don't know that we've really learned about COVID yet completely. He said, the thesis of my talk is not new. We think about clotting, fibrinolysis, immune reactions, and inflammation as if they were separate and separable processes. In truth, these distinctions are man-made. In real life, it is the body as a whole that responds to injury. The processes through which it defends itself are interlocked like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. We may be intrigued by the intricate pieces of this puzzle, but the picture emerges only when they are put together. We need to, and, and, and emblematic of that is, anticoagulation alone is not the answer in this disease. And it is important for investigators from both the clotting world, the in inflammatory world, and the immunologic world to get together and, and, and attack this disease. Now, several large tri international trials have appeared to settle the issue of anticoagulation because D-dimer is up, thrombosis uh, occurs, and it kills people and so forth. And so these large trials, an NIH multi-platform trial was done and that it was decided that full dose anticoagulation was superior to the usual care prophylactic anticoagulation in, in reducing the need for organ support and mortality in moderately ill patients. It didn't apply to ICU patients where apparently therapeutic doses didn't help. And as a matter of fact, the only thing they did there was increase the bleeding. Now, along comes the ACTION trial, beautifully done trial out of South America. And uh, this was just recently uh, presented, and it showed just the opposite in patients with COVID-19 with elevated D-dimer levels. Therapeutic anticoagulation did not improve the care of these patients, including 30 days after hospitalization, and uh, increased the bleeding compared with uh, uh, if you use therapeutic anticoagulation, it increased the bleeding compared to prophylactic anticoagulation. Well, what's the story here? 
Is the lack of individual patient risk assessment one explanation for the disagreement regarding benefits of anticoagulation dosing in COVID-19 patients? I don't think it's ever been a good idea to put everyone in the same shoe. Recently, a trial was, was done uh, with Alex Spiropoulos from New York and Alfonso Tufour uh, from uh, North Shore. And it was a retrospective study, including 184 patients, using both the improved score and the Caprini score to evaluate the incidence of VTE and mortality. The results clearly showed that either score would correlate with the incidence of VTE events and mortality. And they indicate the value of risk assessment for this disease. Now, the Caprini score is a thorough history and physical with 40 elements. And it's based on the fact that as the number of risk factors goes up and the strength of each risk factor is calculated, some are stronger than others, putting those together yields a number. And as the DVT rate goes up along with the number, it's a nonlinear increase, higher number, higher DVT rate. It's been very popular in surgical patients and validated throughout the world in 5 million patients in over 200 studies. The improved score has been championed by Alex Spiropoulos. It's the most widely used score in medical patients and it's approved for medical patients. Tremendous amount of work done in this area. The beauty of this score is it's simple and there's only a few elements and yet it really works. And in this study that I was just talking about, low risk, the mortality was 15%. The moderate risk, when this is the improved criteria, uh, was 16.5%, uh, or 66%. And the highest risk was 68%. So there was a statistically significant increase in mortality depending upon the score. And just to highlight the Caprini score results, uh, low risk, uh, very low risk, but uh, as the DVT rate went up, those patients with a score of nine or above had a 30% incidence almost of DVT. And what's even more compelling, low risk patients, low risk of mortality, high risk patients, 80% mortality. Now, have we forgotten everything that we learned prior to the pandemic? We know that the improved score has been shown to significantly reduce symptomatic VTE using rivaroxaban after discharge in acutely ill medical patients. 56% symptomatic VTE reduction without any increase in bleeding. So that was part of the initiative for the uh, Michelle trial, which was recently com completed. And believe me, this is going to change clinical practice. And the primary safety efficacy outcomes, uh, and these outcomes were a composite of symptomatic VTE, VTE-related death, asymptomatic VTE, and symptomatic uh, all, uh, uh, arterial thrombotic events, MI, non-hemorrhagic stroke, male, and cardiovascular death at day 35. And we can clearly see no increase in bleeding and a 67% risk reduction in the incidence of the primary outcome. So I would like to uh, now talk about something that comes from my friend in Maine. Never treat a, kill a friend, never treat a stranger. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, first of all, when you meet somebody, you have to interrogate them thoroughly so that you know, know something about their history. And then uh, once you know that, they become like your friends and you'd never, you'd, you'd never kill a friend because you would be able to protect them properly. And you would never treat a stranger because you would never not ask them all of these questions. So performing the thorough history and physical gives you knowledge about these patients like, as if they were a good friend. Now, are we treating most COVID-19 patients like strangers without individual risk assessment? This is a critical exercise, especially during COVID-19. So I'd like to thank the organizers for allowing me to present this lecture. And I hope all of you will visit my social media platforms, stay safe and have not only a wonderful day, but all this great success for this meeting. Thank you very much.